Good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? You enjoying Word Camp so far? Excellent. Today we're going to get kicked off right on time. We want to make sure that we keep these sessions going, flowing, so you guys get as much information. We've got a jam-packed session here. We have Mary Baum, the founder and owner of Racket Press, a website or a company that builds on Genesis to develop uh, websites for tennis companies. And so she's going to be talking to us today about CSS Grid. And without further ado, please help me welcome Mary Baum. How do you do? Good morning, Miami. It's nice to be in warm weather in March. I was at a word camp a couple of years ago. Well, I had flown in to my hometown from California where we were living. And I cannot get this back on, so I guess I don't know how I'm going to be able to walk around a lot. But I have a pocket, that's how. Uh, so I want to make sure before we get started that we're all in the right place. We're here to talk about grid, right? Rectangles, squares, rows, columns, all those like sharp cornery things. Kind of like this, right? Would you believe that this is a grid layout? Yes, ma'am and sirs. This is a grid layout, bona fide, because that's the grid overlay. That is the Chrome DevTools version of a grid overlay. At a certain point, which we will talk about later, you want to switch over to Firefox because it'll only show you one grid at a time, and Chrome wants to show you all the grids. And as you can see, grid is a great way to do an asymmetrical layout with circles. And they stay put when you change the viewport if you write your grid properly. See? There's the grid on the phone view. There's a tablet view. We are kind of smushed up there, but it is what it is. Those are really supposed to be actual circles. Oh, isn't that going to be lovely for our WordCamp TV team to cut out that noise? Oh. Here we are back at the home page. And that grid again. And we'll, we, if we have time, we'll look at why, you know, what we did with the grid to make sure that none of those circles ended up in unfortunate places on her tank top. But that is one of the hallmarks. But as we look at this grid, let's take a look, because it is the same for all our breakpoints. And no, you can't read that code, but you can read that. That's the basic grid for that narrow view. This thing keeps flipping over. This is when I wish I was a Hindu god so that I could have more than two hands. Oh, I sincerely wish that. Now, did you notice in that code before that we're dealing with a new unit here, the fraction? How many of you have seen the fraction before? Yes, a few of you. All those calculations about percentages and stuff, when you just know that you need three of them the same, or five of them the same, or eight of them the same, eight fractions. And you really don't know how, need to know, in that case, how wide they are. I mean, there are other cases where you do, but not now. So you can do one fraction, two fractions, three more. I was sort of thinking of one potato, two potato as I was making that slide. Now, before we go any farther, let's pay some dues. We would only be here together we are only here together because of two women. Jen Simmons 
and Rachel Andrew. Jen has a podcast that is kind of marvelous called The Web Ahead in 2015. As you can see, it was podcast of the year. It's all about the history of the web and how that informs where the web is going now, which also dovetails nicely into her role as the us advocate at Mozilla. And I've actually been talking to her a bit on Twitter. Ooh, fangirl, I am of her. And her whole thing is, what do we need next in design for the web? And there is a list of all the stuff that you can read over the next six months if you don't take any breaks to learn about grid. Rachel, a lovely English woman. She co-founded co with a good friend the Perch CMS, which is smaller than WordPress. I won't hold that against her. And this is the page that I've had up for the last six months every time I've been doing stuff with Grid. So check them out. Anybody who talks about Grid, they should be referring to these two women because They've been spending the last three years of their lives making sure that we can talk about Grid, that it is implemented in the browsers. And Mozilla, Mozilla, where Jen is, has hired Rachel to do most of that documentation, and they've both been speaking about it. So, Grid. Blank slide, I wonder why. Oh because we're starting a build. What is it? Where do we use it? Does it work with Flexbox? And how do we get started? Well, how do we get started? We're pretty much getting started today, so there won't be an actual section on that. But let's start with the others. First of all, here's what it's not. It's not a plugin. It's not a framework. It's not a page builder. And it's not a panacea, because you've got to learn it. Grid is a CSS specification. Flexbox, by contrast, how many, anybody here not know what Flexbox is? Excellent. Flexbox is a way of dealing with things, divs, boxes, whatever you want to call them, that you want to lay out in a specific way in one dimension. I mean, there is a wrap thing that you can use to make a grid, but we don't need to do that anymore, really, because we got grid. Flexbox is a module. I have an idea that this is based on how many hundred pages in the CSS specification it actually takes to talk about all the things. You know, Flexbox is like this long, and Grid is like, oh, this long. Where do we use it? Where do we use it? Grids of posts is an obvious answer. Instead of Flexbox in such a grid, instead of floats, Floats are still relevant, or they will be again this summer. We'll get to that at the very end. I'm going to skip over that because of time, and instead of block, an inline block. Instead of Flexbox, this page from the St. Louis Tennis Hall of Fame used to be in Flexbox. In fact, this is the Flexbox page using row wrap if, for you Flexbox aficionados. Here's the same page, now in grid and with my favorite backstretch uh, featured image thing. This is a category archive. By the way, I, I do Genesis. You could do all this stuff mostly in underscores or any other theme. I just happen to do Genesis. One thing I like about Genesis, there is a content box on the archive admin page. I got to look skinny for the camera. 
It's not going to work. All I did was just do, do for you in the camera what I tell my tennis pros to do. My favorite sports, in addition to tennis, are taking pros' pictures and resetting their email passwords. <laughs> but anyway, so this is a category archive, and thanks to Genesis, I could just stick all those alphabetized names in columns using CSS. Multi-column. 18 minutes. we got to speed this up. Uh, in that introductory thing, which is, can also be good for, CS, for uh, SEO. So instead of floats, here's a grid of pros on a club site, my club site. And we've, you can do that with floats. And you know, if you know how wide they are, and if you want to set your margins and padding, much easier in grid. Somebody last night was saying, well, now, how does this work with foundation? And it's like, I was a big foundation fan in 14, 15, 16. And then Flexbox and Grid came along, and it was like, don't need you anymore, sorry. But boy, did you teach me how to work with the loop. That's the main thing I did. And this page is still in the foundation in a theme. I'll redo this in grid probably later this summer. Now, inside a post, you can do the same thing. And Gutenberg is going to help this a lot. I uh, said, I, I refer to things as, I, I threw up this portfolio on my site, but that doesn't sound quite right, so I, stick, I stuck it up there. And you'll see we're looking at a phone layout. Same deal here. That's that sustaining partners page from the Hall of Fame. And they're essentially based on this. Again, one tube of content, one fraction. You could also call it 100 uh, viewport width units or you know, 100% or whatever, and you'd get the same thing. Now, can we talk? Can we get really real here? We talk about phone view and tablet view and laptop view and Thunderbolt view, if you have one of those, as I am blessed to have, uh, or privileged, or those 27-inch Thunderbolts. I have a son-in-law who works in sports information at a university. I would bet that he has to design for the Jumbotron. And half of us are now wearing Apple Watches. Folks, the names we give those views and the breakpoints at which we set them are euphemisms. Grid template columns, one fraction. One fraction can be anything. Breakpoint, the fact is, breakpoints. Damn it, are a lie. Breakpoints are a lie. So we can talk about those, we can use it as shorthand, but let's remember we have no clue. And yes, there was supposed to be a word between no and clue, a participle. <laughs> What size any given user looks at our site on at any given time? We just don't. Uh, I have a guilty pleasure of those mock-up packs you can like buy for 30 bucks to like show off your site, you know, in a photograph of a MacBook. There are like, you know, game consoles in there. And the and the the uh, controllers that have screens. We could be looking at this on like a PS2 or a Sony something or some, and things that are not invented yet, also things that died five years ago. You know, 
One of the things you find out when your parents get older is they're using things you didn't know still existed and in ways you never dreamed of. Wait till you see the first time some parent of yours has signed up for a particular service 27 times in the same month. It's an eye-opener. So these are those things. Breakpoints are a lie. That is the first thing I'm going to repeat a million times at 23 minutes hell. So this is the grid and tablet view. We'll skip the code. You can look at this online. Because I want you, and yes, you can mix units. I'll just say that. We don't have to go through it. You guys get that. So no code pen. Does it work with Flexbox? Absolutely. I still use Flexbox for all my navigation. Ever wonder why we haven't been doing for years and are just starting to see headers with the logo in the middle and links on either side? Until five minutes ago, that was hard, you know, with floats, because you're having these links with the floats left. And I mean, that's, that's a good 500 lines of CSS right there. You do not want to go there without grid. Flexbox, on the other hand, was born for navigation. In two lines of code, you can make it do anything you want. And then, of course, with all this stuff, hey there, Bessie, the elephant in the room. Browser support for Flexbox and Grid, it's as good as they come, with one exception, Opera Mini. How many of you use Opera Mini on your phone right now? How many of you know anybody who uses Opera Mini on their phone right now? You do. What? <laughs> well, does he play tennis? <laughs> Find Chris Lemma and ask Chris about the boxing class he's taken. Your friend might like that better. Bessie? What are you still doing here? We're almost out of time. The implicit grid. Very important. Here's a product page. I'm not telling you where this is because it's not quite done yet, but I did do this view of the product because it's got a lot going on. You know, you start laying out a page like this, and it's a little complicated. So you define an overall grid at the beginning. It doesn't cascade, so it's going to be useless about three like two children down. So on the content, there's that. You see where all those elements that were so nicely placed started out? Because. Grid added some other lines just because of how I said, you know, tried to place them with the placement notation. And if our display was a little bit cooler, you'd see that there are a bunch of little lines. That's the implicit grid, which is the result of this basic point, which I'm going to say twice because it's so important. And then I think I will kick Bessie to the curb and take your questions for like one minute. The browser adapts the grid to the elements you put in it. You don't define the grid and then put elements in. I mean, you do. But you define the grid, you put in your elements, and then the grid changes. And so then you have to accept those changes or make changes based on what the implicit grid has done. And we're going to skip all of my jokes about VWs, the viewport width unit. And thank you very much. I'm Mary Baum. I own Racket Press.
And I got speaker cards. Do we have any questions for Mary? Yes. My experience of using older brow people using older browsers are they tend to fall into two categories. People who work in corporations that won't let them upgrade from IE whatever, and they probably shouldn't be booking their tennis games at the office anyway. And the other people who use old computers and old browsers, and this probably should be a lesson to us all, are people who range in age from my age to 100 who are so impossibly rich that they could buy and sell entire states and, in fact, do every day. So if they want to have a degraded experience, there's really not much I can say about that. So there, in fact, you have heard me break the code of conduct, I think. Um, but I tend not to worry about it. I'm getting more, con more on board with accessibility than I was, but not nearly as much as I should be. And you're right, it is a concern for an awful lot of people. So it is something you want to think about. That's probably what they're going to get anyway, or naked HTML. I mean, I, I, if you don't do too much, I mean, if you still write your content semantically, they'll at least get that, and they'll probably get your typefaces and your colors. And if you don't bend to the other temptation in grid, which is to do unspeakable things with the source order in your content. Do we know what source order means? That's the way you write your HTML. You know, H1 headline, a little bit of subtitle copy, H2 headline, then copy, and then other things in the order in which it makes sense to scan the page for information. What yep. else? I guess we're out of here. We are. Thank you guys. Let's everybody give Mary a big round of applause. And it was Racket Press? Racket Press. Racket Press. If you guys have any more questions for Mary about CSS Grid, you're going to be at the Happiness Bar. Happiness Bar. You guys all know where that is by now? Actually, I need to know where that is right now. That's a good question. <laughs> we'll look on the map. Thank you all very much. We'll see you in the next session.